Hey everyone, welcome to Peoples Online. Our goal is to inspire you and encourage you in your walk of faith. We welcome you to join us on Sundays at 9.30 and 11.15 a.m. Stay tuned right to the end of the video. We'll have some ways for you to connect with us. Thanks for watching today's message. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning, and I just want to talk about this simple idea, new season, new things, all right? And uh, I don't know about you, I sort of just am, I can't help it, I think, you know, school sort of makes it this way with us, that, you know, September really seems like that starting point of the year. You go back to school, it's the launch, you know, you sort of get back in the routine, you get rolling with stuff, and, and uh it's that time of year again. Is every, like, who's happy for some routine? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you have kids, do you find that the summer just kills your routine? It's sort of like, it's just like, whoa, what happens? School gets out the end of June, and you're just like, what? There goes two months. It's going to be crazy. But we're so thirsty for September because it comes back. We get back to our routine. routine things get back to normal. We get running sort of where we're supposed to be going, focused on what's important and all of those things. And you know what? I think the same is true for the church. And so this September, this is a time, this is a new season for us, and there are new things in front of us. And I want to just relate a number of things today. And so this is going to be a little bit, I'm going to be just hopping into a couple places, and I really need you to stay focused with me because there are exciting things that are before us as a church. Doors that God is opening before us and that we as a church are going to make decisions about whether we step through them or how many of us step through them or what that all looks like, okay? And so I want to just chat about this today and I want everyone, I really do, I want you to just stay focused on what I'm saying. So back in January, we had a guest speaker in. So I'm going to just maybe, if I can, just for a couple minutes, I just want to just chat a little bit, just sort of what I've just been personally sensing, and this isn't, isn't about me, you know, and I never want the church to be about me. I've, you know, we are where we are as a church because of all the people that we have here. People's Church has consistently been, for a long time, a church of great people, and also a church with many great leaders. And uh, so it's not just about any one person, but, you know, at this moment in time, I know that the role that I have, you know, as the lead pastor of the church and, and just sensing what God was speaking to me even personally, I believe, plays a part in this, okay? So, back in January, we had a guest speaker and uh, Pastor Justin Manzi, and uh, it was just our, our spiritual emphasis weekend, and, and Justin was here, and it was a great weekend. I've never met Justin really before, I talked to him once or twice on the phone, uh, he used to be, if you remember, he was Pastor Nevin's youth pastor way back in the day. And, you know, God got him through that. So, like, obviously, you know, anyways, okay. So, you know, it was just really great having Justin here. And really, a part of that, too, was that Justin is also a, cons a church consultant with, um, it's basically with a thing called Natural Church Development, okay, NCD. And uh, so it was sort of a double thing. We were like, let's have Justin come on out. It was sort of a little bit of I could get to meet him, be introduced to him. And I know that he's involved with this, you know, consulting and helping churches. This past week, Justin and one of his partners was, with, was at the Watoto Church in Africa doing a consultation. 30,000 people, several sites with their leaders, Justin literally, it's just like crazy, you know, he's like posting some videos of like sitting there with the Watoto alumni leading worship. I was just like, okay, that's just not quite fair. But anyways, all right. But you know, it was just really awesome to have Justin here with us. And in the midst of all that, so Justin is actually, so I'm going to lay out a little bit of this month. Justin is actually coming back the end of the month because we as a church have been doing an assessment, okay? And some of you among our church have filled out an assessment online with us to help us figure out what our strengths are as a church and, and where we're going and things that we need to improve on, things that we need to do, okay? So, but jumping back just to the story, in January, Justin was here and 
ministry was happening, and, and you know what? It was just really, really awesome. The Sunday night, uh, Justin uh, really operates with a prophetic gifting, and, and I walked with him as he prayed with everybody. And man, it was crazy. It was off the hook, God stuff. As I watched him sit and identify things about people, he doesn't know anybody. I'm at an advantage that I know people, and he's speaking into just direct, personal things with people that I'm like going, that is right on, that is right on, that is right on. And so it was just absolutely amazing. And uh, in, intermixed in all of that, Pastor Justin gave me a word for myself. And, um, you know, so it, it's one of those funny things. This has happened before, but... Um, I haven't had so many people. I had people that recorded it on their cell phone, emailed it to me. I had several people write it all out, send it. I've ne- like, I have it. <laughs> I, I, lis- I, I even listened to it a couple times last night. I even played it a couple times for my wife and went, see what I'm saying? <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm just joking, okay. But um, it's just simply this, Okay. There was three things that Justin said, and he said that there was a changing season even for, for me personally as a leader. And, and he was saying, don't let anything distract you from these three important things. And so he just simply said that I needed to be a leader that was able to identify. Identify where people need to be positioned, to not be afraid if we need to restructure and change things, to do things differently to actually not let anything distract from that important thing. So that was one of them. The other thing was to instruct that there would be an anointing to raise up leaders, to raise up leaders that are going to teach and instruct, and leaders that are going to train other team leaders. So I really just said this word, like a coaching type of anointing. And to build on principles and tracks of teaching and learning that will help us grow and also train more people so and the last thing was an impartation that that we would mentor people but not just mentor people with just you know information but that we would be people and that even myself personally would strive to be a person who wouldn't just you know say stuff but actually speak and impart giftings okay by the spirit of god and you know because some things It is true. A lot of things are taught, but a lot of things are also caught by the Spirit of God, okay? And we we want to be a church, and I even know I want to be as an individual, someone who is caught up with actually not just knowing about God, but actually experiencing God, and actually, you know, sensing and experience His power and His work upon our life. And we want to be a church that exemplifies that. Okay, we don't want to just talk about it. We actually want to live it out. And so anyways, these these three things were said. And, you know, and so you sort of have one of those moments where you're like, okay, well, we'll we'll just see what how this unfolds. And like, oh, my goodness, this year has been a year of these things for me. Feeling like God stretching me and directing me. Especially like right from the very first thing that when I've been thinking about who we are as a church and about where we're going, there's a lot of things that can remain the same, but there's other things that have to change for us to go places we've not gone before. And so there has to be some shifting. There has to be some restructuring. There has to be some new things that we add along the way to go where God wants us to go. And I just have sensed all year long, God just speaking, he's like, Tony, don't be afraid. It's okay. It's all right to speak new things. It's all right to speak new steps and new places and, and new ways of doing things. We're still the same church. We're still the same DNA. We're still the same people. And, and it's okay because I even remember, you know, a number of years ago when we went to two services that, you know, and I'm, I, I had people that would say to us, you're like, we shouldn't do that, Pastor, because the church is going to change if we go to two services. Well, they were right. The church has radically changed, but literally about five years ago, we had half as many people. 
okay? So sometimes, you know, you have to change how you do things. You have to restructure how you do things to move ahead. It just, it's just part of how things go. If we decide to stay the same, well, we stay the same. And we stay in the same place. But I don't believe at all because what I hear God saying, and I was sharing this earlier with the, the choir and the prayer team before the service, is that I hear God saying a couple things. It's just simply this. He says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And the Lord says, you know, ask, ask of the Lord that he will send out workers into the harvest field. So I can't help it that I think in my mind when I look across the city of Hamilton, I see that the harvest is plentiful. I see that the opportunities are great and that God has a desire, just the same as he does in every city, in every town, and in every village, in every community, that God, you know, he wants to send out people. And I want to be, and I want us to be, and I believe that the majority of us want to be those types of people that can say, God, I will be one of those willing workers that will go out into the harvest field. Now, that's one thing, but the other thing that I see in Scripture is that God also says, that his kingdom is forcibly advancing. And it says that forceful men and women take hold of it. You know, going after the kingdom of God is just not just going to just happen. Forceful men and women have to take hold of it. You have to just start to declare some things over your life. You have to start to believe some things. You have to live in faith. You have to speak the things that are not as if they are. You have to have vision, right? Vision is actually being able to see something. It's like by faith. We are able to see something before it actually exists. This is big in the kingdom of God. I've talked about this a lot, but I just, just simply for a moment, I want to just highlight this. For us as followers of Christ... Faith for what is not yet is always to be part of our life, okay? It is to be part of who we are as followers of Jesus. So look at it right from the simplest of things. If it's your marriage, if it's your children, like look, your, your children are growing up and you know what? You speak out in faith. They are going to be mighty men, mighty women of God. We, we, like it's the attitude of our hearts. We're not thinking, well, we just hope they get by in the kingdom of God. You're like, no. We believe that they are going to do greater things than we ever did. They're going to believe for greater things than we ever could because we are people of faith. We're building towards something that, yes, we, o- we may even in this moment only have vision for, but we're believing for it as if it is already true, Amen. right? This is the way that it works. And so it's the same thing that it's not just your kids. It's not, you know, it could be your family. It could be your marriage. It could be your career. It could be whatever, But I want to also say, it should be the church. Where we are as a church, we should always be going, what's next? Where are we going next? I don't want to get comfortable. I don't want to just stay where I am. What is next? Where is God calling us to next? What is he, you know, opening up, making, you know, come before us? What is next? So this is just an important season. So jumping back into this year. So back in January, I had this word, and, and it's sort of just all year. It's just been like, you know, percolating in my heart. And so a couple months ago, um, I went with the missions, you know, our missions, pretty much our annual missions trip to the Dominican. And um, you know what, can, just before I go any farther with that, can... This morning, right here, Lardwin was playing guitar. Lardwin and his wife are here, Chrissy, and they're from the Dominican. Can we welcome them? Come on. And uh, uh, Chrissy is originally from Canada. She's right from Hamilton, and she's here for a couple months. She comes home usually once or twice a year and does some nursing. And uh, so they're here right now. And Lardwin and Chrissy have been involved with the ministries that we've been involved with in the Dominican. Isn't partnership beautiful that you can, you know, Lardwin, we're so glad that you're here and that you can come. And he's a very talented musician, professional musician, even there. And then he can come here and be with us. I absolutely love that when the kingdom of God works like this, okay? Absolutely amazing. So thank you. So jumping back, I'm in the Dominican and we're going to, you know, we're going out to the the places that the, the ministry is happening there. We go to see their schools and the schools that they're involved with. We go to see the pregnancy 
uh, center that they're doing. We go to see the community center, and we worked a ton on the community center that they're building, and we go to see the buildings that they're already working in, you know, just ministering to the community, ministering to kids, ministering to moms and families and homes that they've built. And, and, and I got to be honest, okay, I loved, I, I mean, I loved everything I was seeing. But I was sitting there, and one of the things that overtook me was I was just like, I can't believe all the amazing things, all the impact, all the mentoring, all the stuff that is happening there, like on a shoestring. You know, with, with so few resources, such great impact. And it really just, it was just hitting me again. It was like, just like getting slapped in the face. A good slap, but you know what I mean? It was just an awareness was coming. I was just like going, I cannot believe what these people can do so much with so little. And I, I have to be honest, a conviction started to come upon me. Okay, and so that was one part of it, but... Part of the thing that is that we go every year to the Dominican, usually with Lighthouse Church, and it's my brother's church in, in Cape Breton, and they've been going for, I think Dave's been going down there for like 10 or 15 years. And, and you know, I'm seeing that they, they almost have a group similar to the size of ours there from Cape Breton, and they're a church of less than 100 people. Like when you would talk about who their church on a Sunday, they're a church of less than 100, and, and they run uh, a thing called Undercurrent and minister to around 400 young people every week, like all sorts of programs, like yes, they do, they do a ton of skateboarding and all that stuff, but also they offer music programs and just mentoring programs and just all sorts of great stuff for young people. This church with like Less than 100 people, and this past year, they have launched a second site. A second site. You barely have 100 people at your first, and you've launched a second site. Because church planting is in their hearts. And yet again, I sit and I get convicted. Because I'm like, for us as a church, okay, I'm just being real, real honest. Here we are as a church, you know, now... I went and fact-checked all of this. You know, every year we fill out this thing. It's called the ACLR, and uh, it's a, a yearly report that we fill out for our denomination. And so I literally could go back. I looked at everything from 1987 till basically 2017 because we just put in the 2018 one just this summer, okay? So I can look at our church basically almost the last 30 years, Okay? So, I just want to just, as way of reference point, basically from probably 97-ish to probably 2005, we were right around 200 people, okay? That's the numbers that we put in, that we told 200 people with a reach of about 400 people. You put in sort of like who would call the church their home, uh, you know, that type of stuff, and and. So, anyways, things have obviously changed over the last, whatever, 12, 13 years. A lot has happened for us as a church, especially in the area of growth. Now, today, there will, there will most likely be between seven and 800 people here on this day, between our children and the adults and, you know, our young adults and everybody that... So, we are now three to four times larger than what we used to be, whatever, 12, 13 years ago, okay? God has been really, really good to us. Lots of amazing things have happened. Lots of great growth has happened. But yet again, <laughs> I've been sitting here. I'm, seeing, I'm hearing what God's saying to me personally. I'm out experiencing what we are experiencing as a church. We're seeing the ministries that we've partnered with things that we've partnered with and you know not just in the Dominican but not just even in Cape Breton but we have partnered with so many ministries and they are doing so many things and it really got I was like going I hear God saying to me Tony there's more that you guys can do there is definitely more there's more impact and I even feel there's more responsibility upon us and we are running on a shoestring okay 
you know, we have gone through seasons with us as a church where we've been sort of flat broke, but that's not where we are. That's not, you know, God has blessed us in so many ways. And so these are times for us to do things that we have not usually, if, if we could do, if, you know, and when I look back, if we can go from 200 to 800, well, we can go 800 and beyond, no problem. Like, I remember when it seemed like I, if I was handing out $50 bills, I don't know if I could have got people to come in, okay? But, like, we don't have to do that anymore. We have people that visit here every week, come see our church, check it out, come be part of it, all of that stuff. You know, it's awesome. We're excited about that. But you know what? I want to just say, to who much is given, much is required. Okay? And that's in my heart. Okay? And so I want everyone to hear this. I want you to hear my heart on it. Because this is going to matter as we take steps forward. You see, we want to be a church... That's about transformation. I've been reading a bunch this summer about just what makes churches thrive and what makes churches healthy. And this sort of this thing just kept jumping out at me. That churches that are about transformation thrive and live and grow and are healthy. Now, what does that mean? Okay. Is that obviously this is by Jesus. It's not because... But we believe in transformation, both personally, the people that are inside the church are transformed by Jesus, okay? That makes sense to everybody? We come to church, we experience Christ, we learn about Christ, we grow, we change, we become different than who we used to be. We're transformed by the power of Jesus and by the power of the gospel, okay? But sometimes that's where the church stops, it's like we're inside and we're being transformed. That is only part. You see, churches that are about transformation and transforming go into their community and transform it. Go in and change it. Go in and do works outside of this because we aren't supposed to just be transformed, but we are actually supposed to go. God says we are messengers, okay? Messengers of reconciliation. Messengers of transformation. Messengers that go out and say, hey, there's hope in Jesus' name. It speaks through our life. And so this is of the most importance. When we look into the future and what we're going to be about as a church, we are going to be a church that stays on transformation on us on the inside and for everyone else that we're trying to bring in, okay? Everyone else that we're trying to usher in. And it's not just about our property here, or, but it's trying to usher people in to the kingdom of heaven, okay? Into relationship with Jesus. This is what we need to be about. So, this brings me to this really, really important thing. As we're looking ahead, you know, I've mentioned, you know, in a couple weeks, we're going we're gonna to do a bit of a consultation ourselves, and next Sunday, you know what, I'm, we're going to hop, hop back a little bit, and we're going to talk about uh, just our expansion and the renovation plans that we have. We have, we have done, we had to shift gears, Okay. We had one architect, we shifted to another, it's taken some time, and we've revamped what we're doing, changes, and you know, we're going to unveil that and roll that out next week. But I just want to just, last September, I was basically in the first couple weeks of September, we talked about who we are, what our vision is, and where we're going. This is an exact statement I made last year, okay, at this time, okay, and so I was talking about the details, and we were talking, we were celebrating that, you know, we have the parking lot done, and, and the new children's, you know, uh, play area in the back, but we were forecasting, and we were talking about vision, about, you know, the new expansion with the front of the church, with the children's area, and the foyer, and, and just, and expanding our sanctuary. I was talking about all of these things. Well, next week, we're going to lay that all out, okay? So this is still on our agenda and these things, we're actually supposed to have all the costing and, and you know, pictures and everything to, to do this next Sunday, okay? So that is our plan. So that's one thing that is right before us as well, okay? But also, I said these exact words. I said, we also believe there is a day coming soon that we will plant a new church, a new site here in Hamilton and in the Hamilton area. And that 
And they said, we are also willing to partner with other churches for growth. We believe we are to be a light in our community. We have our hands in many things, but there is room for more. Okay. That was last September. Okay. I already know that God was speaking things into our hearts and, and preparing, you know, preparing the road for us. It's been in our hearts to expand. And as I've said, so many good things. So much good growth. And you know, it's been in our hearts. I've been just thinking about it like, honestly, it's in my heart. And I'm not trying to scare any of us, but I think that we need to go to multiple places in our city. Because we know, we know that the ministry reach, if you look especially to the children and the young people, especially that come to our ministry programming, are coming within a couple kilometers of here. They're not coming from Stony Creek. They're not coming from the East Mountain. They're not, they're not even coming from far even West Mountain. You know, it's a pretty centralized area. So our church has a certain, you know, the, the, most, the majority of its reach is sort of in close proximity. If we want to reach more people, we're going to have to go into other places in the city. Okay? It's important. And so this has already been in our hearts, and it's been in our hearts to go downtown. All right? It's like downtown, you can, you can see so many churches that are closing, churches that are being torn down, churches that are being turned into apartment buildings and all sorts of other things. Our downtown core, it's just like things are escaping. And you know what? I just believe in who we are and what we do, that we as a church, that we need to consider these things and we need to consider that we can, the things that we already do and that are part of our DNA will be a great fit in other parts of our city. Okay? So, this brings me to back in April of this year. You see, there's like an unfolding of stuff's happening. Back in April, I was approached by <clears throat> our district leadership, Pastor Mark Collins, who's in charge of, you know, uh, really... He's, in the past, he's been in charge of church planting, but right now he's really got this portfolio to help churches, you know, revive, rejuvenate, relaunch. And uh, that's a major part of what he's doing, just helping churches readjust and move into new futures. And so Pastor Mark Collins called me and asked me if I would meet with him to discuss the possibility of our church taking over another PAOC church here in our city. And would we consider it? And I was like, hey, for sure we consider it. Let's sit down and talk, all right? So this broke into several meetings with the district leadership. And then this led to us going to see the church. And then taking, literally, we showed up with pretty much all, the majority of our team came down to visit the church, okay? Okay. We've met with the pastor. We've met with their lead team several times, both with some of our board and with Willie and I on behalf of our church. And, you know, we've talked about this with the board. We've talked about it with our staff. We've spent a lot of time looking at this. So I'm going to just, we're going to put up some pictures because the church is Cumberland Christian Assembly, okay? Down on Cumberland Avenue, downtown. And uh, they originally were a German branch Pentecostal church. And that's, you know, part of, as well, was part of the PAOC. That really doesn't, that sort of standard doesn't exist anymore. It's just we're all the PAOC. We don't really call that we have different branches or like that. And uh, Cumberland has been, you know, one of the churches, one of the PAOC churches in our city. And uh, they have their own building. It's fully paid for. The building is actually in really good repair. Uh, the church is not in debt. They actually have money in the bank, okay? But what they're short on is people. Well, what do we have a lot of? People, right? And, you know, you can see that we could marry some things together. And so discussions have, you know, progressed. And, and, and i got to be honest. Aside from, you know, regular life, we've got to run the church, and, you know, everybody has the regular things that they have to do. I believe I have spent as much mental power as I possibly could facilitate thinking about 
how we can do this, what it will look like, how we're going to position the people. And I literally have, we're not going to do this with just the same people that we have. We have to hire people. We've been working on that. We've got to hire a site pastor. We also got to make some adjustments here in our staffing because this is part of the identifying and the restructuring of what we need to do such a thing. And you know, over the next couple months, our heart is to follow through with this. This is a sister church in our city that is struggling, and the last thing they want is for it to close. Okay? And I want to tell you, the last thing I like hearing is that churches are closing. It drives me crazy, because I don't believe it's necessary. I don't believe it needs to happen. And I believe that, you know what, we can come along with our vision and our DNA, okay? Statistically, just so that you are aware, when a church is in a, uh, like a season of decline, okay, numerically, if you do a consultation, it's about a 5 to 10% chance that you're going to right the ship, okay? It's about 25% chance of righting the ship if you get a new pastor, it's around 75% if you're adopted by a healthy church. Okay? This is what the statistics say. Okay? So, we as a church, we have it in our hearts. This was already happening. This was already, you know, big in us already that we were thinking about and already dreaming about. Where else is God calling us in the city? And then this came up. Well, I sort of think that's just God. Okay, and you know what, as we've been meeting, there's, they have a great pastor, Pastor Gunter, and he has been there for over 40 years. He's 80. Okay, and he is, you know, he is faithfully, there's been some seasons of difficulty with the church. He actually had already handed the church off before, and there, <clears throat> there were some challenges there, and he came back in. He wasn't planning on being in the position that he's in right now but you know what I just we just bless them and bless them for what they've done and you know what we're excited over the summer you did not realize but over the summer there was a number of Sundays that we've had their leadership here that people from their church have been invited they've all like because they took a couple weeks off in the summer and sent their people here and so we've had people from Cumberland visiting us over the summer because I've been like listen you gotta come and see what we're like because that is gonna be your future Okay? And we can't help. We're not changing who we are. And what is happening, I just want to just, there's so many details and I can't share. It, it's just, it's too much to take in all at one time. But this isn't going to be two different churches. We are going to be one church. Cumberland is joining us and we are going to be People's Church. Okay? Now, we are also going to be People's Church. Yes, we are with two sites, okay? Two places that you can come and we're going to provide the same DNA, the same type of ministry, the same style of ministry as we presently do, but we're going to provide it both downtown and on the mountain, okay? All right. It's good. And so... These are exciting times. And so over the next couple months, you know, there's one Sunday in October and one Sunday in November. I'm going to be going down to speak there. We're going to be taking our worship team down to lead worship on those Sundays. But we also want to take people with us on those Sundays. And uh, over the next couple months, we're going to be developing the teams that are going to go down there because we have to go down there with children's ministries, everything, because the other thing that we want, we want 50 to 75 people at least from here to go there. Okay? Commit for one year. It's something to think about. It's something to pray about. You don't have to decide today. I don't need anyone to come and tell me, I'm ready. I'm going, Pastor. Okay, I, don't, I just want to eat some ice cream after the service. Okay? 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 But take some time to think about it. Maybe, especially especially if you live downtown already, we, we have a desire to reach in to another part of our community. We, we have, okay, and I just want to, we have sense, we have thought in our hearts, 
to go downtown, even over the last couple months, just a little bit more backdrop, Willie and I and a couple of our staff several times, we've gone, we met with Donna Skelly when she was still in office. We've been down to meet with Tom Jackson. We have gone and looked at several schools that have closed down in our city because schools, you know, have these facilities that, you know, very similar to what we already have. This has already been in our hearts. And even a couple months ago, we were down with Tom Jackson and I was like, Tom, can you find us a school downtown? You know, because there's been some East Mountain and, you know, we do. We probably, eventually, maybe we'll get over on the East Mountain as well. But downtown, we're just like, is there any schools that are closing? And then in the midst of all of this comes this, okay? And so, you know, we just really, really do sense that God has been leading us even when we got to the board. And, you know, it's just crazy. Just when we first got to this with our staff, you know, not to, our older staff, like Pastor Carl and Pastor Art, they're like, let's do it. <laughs> this is like, what's the hold up? Let's start next week. They went down before I even had a chance to get down there. I like sent out the two spies that I didn't send. <laughs> no, they didn't just go down and look. They got down there and the custodian was there and he get, took them in and gave them a tour. I was like... <laughs> I haven't even had a chance to go. Oh, anyways, send out the spies, send out the spies. Okay, but it was amazing, you know. And then we got to our board, and uh, two of our senior gentlemen that are on our board, uh, <laughs> yeah, Josh Van Gill, um, Ivan and Larry, they're just like, all right, let's get on it. We're like, I'm just like, hey, this has come up. I'm like trying to grease the skids with everyone and like give it to them easy. You know, I'm like, no, no, let's start next week. What's wrong with us? <laughs> and I was just like, you know, it sort of made me think. I was just like, does this younger generation not have faith like the older generation? Because <laughs> like, I was like, there just doesn't seem to be, you know, any apprehension. Just run after this. You know, all that to say, it's been exciting to watch it unfold. As we've discussed, as we've talked, both with our staff, both with our board, we are like 100%. Like, yes, there's lots of details to cover. There's lots of I's to dot and lots of T's to cross. We know that. But our hearts, 100%, we believe that this is one of these God-ordained, God-opened doors that he wants us as a church to walk through. And that I'm believing, you know, that four and five years from now, we'll be like, that was one of the best things we ever did. And some, we're going to watch people get baptized. We're, we're going to watch people give their hearts to Jesus. We're going to see families changed and mentored. And, and like, because there's a great need. You know, even when you look at the demographics in that area downtown, you know, there's a lot of similarities to the area that we're in. But, you know, one of the main things that's huge there is single parents. The income level isn't as high. The education level isn't as high. And I don't look at any of those things and go, well, that's, well, that's just not great potential. I'm like, no, that is absolutely the potential we're looking for. Because we are not just meant to be transformed, but to transform. Okay, we are to go into our city, the different places, and be transforming agents for Jesus and for the kingdom of God. And so as we look ahead, Okay, what, what does this look like? Okay, and I, I got to wrap this up because the ice cream is waiting. I've told them to take it out so it could thaw, so it won't break anyone's teeth. Okay, it's thawing right now. Okay, um, but could I just ask a couple things? Okay, just a couple things is that, you know, we need everyone, and I mean this, please hear me, we need everyone to buy into this. We need, we need people to go. We're going to run all sorts of outreach events and different things in that area. We are going to, we're taking, it's like raising a child. We're going to take on brand new responsibility. And so we can't, you know, well, we'll show up when we feel like it. You know what? One of the things that plagues a little bit of the church is that we've gotten into a routine Okay, this isn't just us, okay? But the church en masse, it's sort of like we, go, we used to go to church a couple times a week. 
Now we go to church a couple times a month. Okay? Seriously. It is hard for the church to be the church if we only come out two times a month on a Sunday. That's not being the church. Okay? Being the church is, yes, you come out and we get fed, but then we go. And that's going to require time and effort and talents and ability. It's going to require finances. It's going to require stuff of us. We're not going to go and we're not going to do great exploits for the kingdom of God if we're just about it haphazardly. And so what am I asking? I'm asking, you know what? For us as a church, let's bear down, all right? Start canceling some other things for church. I am dead serious, okay? So many of us cancel church for other things. Our kids are in sports. We cancel church. Our kids, you know, we have a family birthday party. We cancel church. We got, we, we can't, what, I want to ask you, what do you cancel for church? Okay, what do you cancel so you can lead a group? What do you cancel so you can volunteer? What do you cancel? See, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know this is like, like, whoa, everything was so positive, Pastor. And then you got to canceling stuff. Okay? But I'm just being serious. I am being serious. If we're going to do unordinary things, we're going to have to live in an unordinary way. Our culture just says, do whatever feels good and fill your life with whatever comes. And I'm like, no. If we do not fill our life with the kingdom of God and prioritize it that way, we won't have the results that we're looking for. It's just, it's just dreams. And I don't want to just have dreams. I'm believing that, you know what, God is going to use us mightily. And so I need, I need everybody. I need you to volunteer. I need you to dig down. I need, you know, we need to give financially. We're going to do a big renovation down there. We're going to change things. We're, like, we're going to have to give of ourselves in every way. And so I'm asking I'm challenging us to do things that we've not done before, to go places that we've not gone before, okay? And this goes right from me, okay? I'm going to have to do the exact same things, okay? But I'm asking for us as a church that we're going to do it together. And you know what? As we go, I'm telling you, it's going to be the best. We're going to see the salvation of God with our own eyes, that it talks about that in Scripture, Every time we baptize somebody, I see it with my own eyes. I dreamt about the days of church being like this, okay? I did, and it wasn't, but it is. And I dream about other things, and I want all of us the same. Let's start to dream about things that don't even exist yet. You know, people coming to know the Lord that we can only see their face as if through a glass dimly, but someday, yes, we're going to see it face to face. Okay? And so I, I, I want to just encourage us, okay, that you know what? These are not ordinary times. These are extraordinary times. But they call us to extraordinary things. And so with God's help, right, forceful men and women take hold of the kingdom of God. All right? Let me pray over us. Thank you. Everybody's been so attentive. All right? Let's just agree to this, okay? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for just as we've sung and we've experienced you. God, we're changed. We're renewed. We're brought to life. And God, we thank you that you you are constantly positioning opportunities for new life all around us. You're setting up opportunities. You're opening doors. You're positioning us for these types of life-giving, hopeful things. And so, God, we believe that for us as a church, this is one of those times. This is one of those times that you have opened up a door and we believe it's you. And we hear you talking to us. And God, I pray that you're going to begin to just talk to each person individually. It's going to go from just a leadership thing, but it's going to stretch out to us as individuals. That we're going to hear you saying, this is what I need to do. This is what I got to do. This is what I'm going to adjust. This is what I'm going to change. This is how I'm going to make room. This is... This is how we're going to play a part. And so, God, we believe there are great days ahead. Great days ahead where we're going to see lived out beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. And, God, in our city, across our city, there are so many places 
that need hope and Jesus is the answer and so Jesus we just pray that you will be leading us and guiding us and we will just become focused on that you are the answer you are the hope of the world you are the light of the world and then we hear you Jesus saying to each one of us that you you said these words he said not only are you the light of the world but you spoke to us and you said to us you are the light of the world and a city on a hill cannot be hidden you don't light a, a light and a candle and put it on its stand and cover it with a bowl no you put it on that stand and you let it shine so that everyone can see who is our father and so that everyone can know why we do the things, the deeds that we do, the stuff that we do, and so that they will praise our Father who's in heaven. And so God, I pray that this is going to be a season, a greater season, where we as a church, we are going to let your light shine. God, through our efforts, through everything that you're putting before us, we're going to let your light shine. And so God, change our city. Do a great work through us as a church. And God, we pray all of these things and we agree to all of these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord today. Amen and amen and amen. All right, so God bless you today. Exciting things ahead, Ex more exciting stuff next Sunday. Please have some ice cream. Hug some people, love some people, shake some hands, talk a lot. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. We would love to hear your story and what God is doing in your life. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us, info at the pc.ca. At People's Church, we're here for you. We have something for everyone. You can check us out at the pc.ca or like us on Facebook. Have a great week and thanks for joining us.